in the future? Do you think everyone is going to be chipped? I think it will be voluntary, but I am certainly convinced that millions of people will find it very, very valuable to have a smart device under their skin. Human microchipping may be our future, but in Sweden, it's already reality. In Privacy Watch, the brain behind SpaceX and Tesla now wants to get inside your brain. Elon Musk's startup Neuralink hopes to one day implant chips in the human brain. Musk unveiled a prototype of the device last month. It's currently being tested in pigs. Goal is to help treat neural disorders. Some say that it could lead to our brains being linked straight up to the internet one day. Well, 5G isn't even rolled out yet in France that its successor, the sixth generation of wireless mobile networks, is being developed. Some scientists say it will be necessary to facilitate improvements in the areas of imaging, presence technology, and location awareness. It is not the first time we've seen uh, BCIs, these are brain-computer interfaces. Uh, in fact, there's kind of a, an interesting history around uh, these computer and machine interface devices. But what Musk unveiled is this kind of quarter or silver dollar size uh, device that sits on top of the brain. How is this company actually tracking and conducting this open source surveillance on people? What sort of information are they looking at here? So corporate surveillance is basically happening all the time and in ways we don't even think about on a day-to-day -day basis. When people talk about corporate surveillance, what they mean is when a company collects information about an individual, uh, often when that individual is not necessarily aware that that collection is occurring. I mean, every time you, you browse the internet, every time you use an app on your phone, even driving your car or just being out in public, oftentimes corporate surveillance is occurring. Social media companies like Google and Facebook and Twitter collect a lot of information, but they're not doing it to sell to third parties. They're mainly collecting this information to give content to other users, but just as importantly, they're using it to create profiles of individuals to advertise towards. Now, while this is generally the model that is supported on the internet, I think there's a lot of concern whether or not all this data collection really is useful to better advertise. Now, first for our viewers, what is 6G and how is it different from 5G? All right, so first of all, I think I'd like to clarify that 6G as a technology does not exist today. Right? It's more like an aspiration, a uh, vision for researchers that we are putting forward. As operators roll out 5G around the world, we're starting to think about what 6G will look like. And we can imagine and think that 6G technology will be deployed uh, 8 to 10 years from today. Right. So going back to your original question, what is 6G and how it's different from 5G? 6G will be a connection of technology that will enable a hyper-connected future, right? A future where uh, people are connected with faster links, but people are also connected with the physical environment where they operate uh, and with the cyber environment where our data resides, right? A number of devices, 500 billion devices are uh, uh, um, foreseen to be connected uh, by 2028. This will include anything from cars to drones, uh, robots, uh, um, construction machinery, factory equipment, medical devices. All these devices will generate massive amounts of data, much more than possible today, to enable this close, responsive and fast interaction with humans. Uh, so why is linking up our brains to computers something that Elon Musk is interested in? Musk does say that this device in the future could allow people to, to restore limb function, cure blindness, but then also even download their memories to robots. What kind of data does Neuralink have to actually back up these claims, or are they just really the dreams of, of somebody who, who is interested in the future and sees possibility around every corner? These are the dreams of somebody who sees uh, possibility in the future and dreams about a lot of big things. Look, uh, if you'd like to learn more about uh, what's called artificial superintelligence, I have a great book for you. It's called Superintelligence, written by Oxford scientist Nick Bostrom, where he talks about the practicality of kind of what Musk is seeking here. What Musk demonstrated was uh, 
an implant running in a pig. He actually showed three different pigs, uh, one that had the implant removed, he said safely, uh, one that never had it, and one that currently had it. And he showed that this was indeed possible to monitor some of the brain activities. Imagine being able to unlock doors or a car with just a wave of your hand. Well, that's exactly what one Utah man can do thanks to some tech underneath his skin. Oh my, that is really going the distance. Ben Workman is one of a few people around the world who are turning to cybernetic implants. Simply speaking, they're different kinds of computer chips that let you do different things. When Elias Brotberger goes to work, he doesn't need ID. And he doesn't need money. In fact, much of what he needs to get through the day is hidden right there, just below the surface, in his hand. Like that chip? Yeah. yeah. Oh, weird, yeah. It's yeah. like... A grain of rice. Yeah, a grain of rice. Embedded in his hand is a microchip that serves as his keys, his ID, and his wallet. Yeah, it's all in chips. So I use it like to get around the building. Buy snacks. Yeah, exactly. Let's buy some snacks. Exactly. So I can't open it. No. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to first blip my chip and it will log me in. Mm -hmm. And from there I get access to the fridge. Popular TV shows like Black Mirror have imagined chips as part of a dystopian future. Install ingrained procedure with local anesthetic and you're good to go. In Sweden, the microchips are already here. The microchip implants use the same technology that's in contactless credit cards which have made cash pretty much obsolete in Sweden. But the massive increase in surveillance post did not only breach the privacy of Muslim communities, it went far deeper. U.S. intelligence state bloomed in the wake of them. Government oversight increased through a vast clandestine network of phone and web surveillance. In 2013, Edward Snowden, a former contractor for the CIA, leaked to the media that U.S. spy agencies had built an intelligence-gathering colossus since the nine attacks that conducted extensive internet and phone surveillance of millions of Americans. I wrote a letter to our CEO asking him to make certain promises to us. I wanted to make sure that he would never collect data without anybody's permission or consent. I wanted to make sure that he put constraints on, on facial recognition. It was surprising then when the CEO called a meeting uh, for the whole company, it was an optional meeting, and he said you know, that we would be there to discuss the issues in the letter and he uh, pulled the meeting together. Of course, the whole company showed up, and you know, he ended that meeting by telling us that he had no intention of putting constraints on, on these kinds of things, and that's when I knew I had to quit. People in France are already concerned about the rollout of 5G because of potential health and espionage hazards. What would you say to them, and will 6G pose even greater threats, do you think? I believe that uh, 5G and 6G will pose less um, health hazards. That means that lower electromagnetic power reaches humans. That means that we have less of an impact on biological tissues. In terms of um, surveillance and privacy, well, that's clearly a very important concern. Eh? 6G, was it, which is expected to be launched commercially in 2030. At this tech fair, a chipping event for those on the cutting edge, merging their hands with this new technology. I thought it would be fun, right? The process is simple and swift. A pinch of the skin, and in a matter of seconds, the chip is inserted. The transformation is complete. As for the pain... I barely felt it. But even in this nation of early adopters, not everyone is racing to get chipped. I feel less human. I will feel like a robot. I think, I mean, it's so much more data can go into this, you know, when it's in your body. Society is kind of built in a way that to interact in modern society, you don't really have a choice about your, your data. And often you can't correct that, collect, that collection of information. Uh, you can't ask for it to be deleted. Um, you, you can't necessarily port that data to somewhere else in some, some instances. And that all this information that's collected um, is retained basically forever, and we don't know how it's going to be used in the future, and it can manipulate us in terms of how we vote, potentially. It can manipulate us in terms of, you know, what we purchase, um, and it can also be used to restrict our options. 
To me, this data collection really equates to power, and there need to be checks on what companies can do with all of our livelihoods, our information, the photos of us that get sent around the world um, for tagging. In particular, I, I start worrying a lot about um, things like smart homes and smart doorbell cameras that either connect directly to law enforcement or can be subpoenaed in court. Meanwhile, the, the big tech CEOs, you know, go in front of Congress and they're asked, you know, are these devices recording us all the time? And somehow are able to convince the public that they're not. But as somebody who helps, who has helped to build these kinds of technologies, I can tell you they absolutely are. Workman also has a magnet in his left hand. Which is literally just a magnet. It doesn't really have any interesting functionality besides just magic tricks and fun stuff. Say I try and convince them a banana is the key. And then I hold a banana up and it unlocks the door. Whether it's practical jokes or practicality, Workman says he's excited to see what he'll be able to do next. So Ben says the next step for him would be to be able to pay for things with just his hand. So no credit cards, no phone, just a chip in his hand. He'd just like to be able to go, you know, pay for it and all that. Wow. I mean, that is a whole new world, right? It is I a mean... whole new world. Interviewing him was a little, it just was a little, I was taken back by it because I was like, wow, you can do all this kind of stuff? That's crazy. Just oh, a wave boy. Of the, just a wave of the That's hand. a bit much, though, for me. I don't know if I like that too much. I hope, I hope nothing happens and no infection and he's okay. <laughs> he's all good. He hasn't had any problems. Wow. So. All right. Well, good for him. Yes. Thank you. What an interesting story. You're Thanks welcome. so much.